Putting the new gun law in a nutshell, it focuses more on how the gun looks instead of its capabilities. Anything that makes a gun look scary is banned, and hence civilians are not allowed to own them. We know some parts of the law are quite absurd, but the absurdity touches a new height when it bans guns that are not even wanted in the first place. Some of these guns are too impractical to own, so banning them doesn't really make much sense, but the Biden administration wants to ban them anyways. So let's take a look at some of the most absurd guns that the Biden administration wants to make illegal with the new law. Number 7. The TNW Semi-Automatic M2HB The TNW is the most impractical and impossible firearm for any civilian to own, but the Biden administration wants to ban it anyways. I mean, have they even looked at the gun? It's a semi-automatic weapon chambered in 50 BMG. That's basically the same machine gun as the Browning M2. The major difference between the two weapons is the barrel, which is heavy in the former, and was designed by John Mosses for the US military at the end of World War I. The variant that's available to civilians does not have full auto firing capabilities. It's marketed to target shooters, collectors, movie companies, and military vehicle enthusiasts. The gun is so heavy that even the strongest individuals can't carry the weapon on their own. You have to mount it on a tank to shoot random people with it. Furthermore, if someone takes this weapon out of the house, it will be noticeable straight away. So banning this doesn't really make much sense, plus the price of this gun is also discouraging even for the most enthusiastic individuals. There's a number of guns that offer much better value and can be purchased at much lower prices. But still, the Biden administration is hell-bent on making this one illegal. Number 6. The Barrett M82 The Barrett M82 was introduced in 1982, and it's one of the few guns that was made available to civilians prior to the military. Almost a decade later, the U.S. Marine Corps commissioned its manufacturer to produce hundreds of units for Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm operations in Kuwait and Iraq. However, despite the commission for these two particular missions, the gun wasn't adopted by the military. It was later in 2002 that the U.S. military finally announced its formal adoption. The gun was customized for the military to accommodate destructive 50 Browning machine gun cartridges that are known as 50 BMG. The Barrett M82 was a gun first of its kind because the idea of a rifle chambered in a 50 caliber cartridge has never been tried. The creator, Ronnie Barrett, was turned down by several local gun shops more than one time but he soon found a partner in Bob Mitchell who gave the creator a shot. As expected, the people were not really interested in such a gun, but orders started to flow in once the first 30 rifles were made. The CIA also purchased a gun for Mujahideen rebels to fight off the Soviet Union in the Afghan war in the 80s. The Swedish government also placed an order for 100 guns for their military, followed by procurement of several batches by the Pentagon for the Gulf War. It was after this that the US military formally adopted the gun. It was given the designation of M107 and a classified number of guns was produced. What makes the ban on this absurd is the fact that most enthusiasts can't even purchase it if they wanted to. It's priced so high that one can purchase almost 20 AR-15s for the same budget. The government's reasoning is that it's banned to prevent access to terrorist groups, which also makes no sense either. The FBI runs a background check on every purchase, which makes it impossible for such individuals to get their hands on this weapon, but it'll be banned anyway. Number 5. The Calico Liberty Calico Liberty was designed and developed by Michael Miller and Warren Stockton in the 1980s. It's also a one-of-a-kind gun that's better than most pistol caliber and carbines when it comes to ammo capacity. The Calico Liberty features a helical design magazine that has the capacity to hold more than 30 rounds of 9mm. Other notable features include a slim profile and ambidextrous controls in addition to the capacity to hold 100 rounds. This massive capacity was also the reason why it went out of business. The Clinton administration banned all guns that could accommodate more than 10 rounds. Now, despite the expiration of the ban, the sales of Calico Liberty have not recovered and the government once again wants to make them illegal. The inclusion of Calico Liberty in the new proposed ban doesn't make sense as even the enthusiasts are not fans of this gun. It's notorious for feeding issues because of its design. There's so many mechanical problems with the weapon that even the military and other law enforcement agencies never even bothered to use them. Mind you, it was marketed at law enforcement agencies in the first place. Furthermore, the original company went out of business after the 1994 ban. It was sold to another owner, and they didn't manufacture any new units. Just the units that the manufacturers developed before the ban are available on the website, and one is particularly keen on purchasing the weapon. 
Number 4. Durya Anakin MC-1980 Durya Anakin is a Turkish arm, but it got quite a bit of popularity mainly because of its looks. It's essentially a converted version of a traditional tube-fed semi-automatic shotgun and works exactly in the same manner. But apart from the looks, there's nothing practical about this gun. The shotgun can just hold four rounds and doesn't offer any advantage over a typical tube-fed design. Biden and his allies want to ban this gun because it features a full-length Picatinny rail on top, flash hider, short under rail, forward post, and an M4-style stock that's adjustable. Essentially, the gun has everything that annoys Democrats and their anti-gunner allies. But most gun enthusiasts aren't even interested in it because of two factors. First, it doesn't even get manufactured in the US. You would have to import it from Turkey and replace some of the components. No one I know would go through the trouble just for those looks. Second, there's much better alternatives that are manufactured here at home and offer much better value. But if anyone buys this gun before the ban, it will be sort of a in-your-face Biden because the gun literally has everything the administration doesn't want you to own. Number 3. The Street Sweeper Street Sweeper is known by many names including Striker 12, Striker Protect a Bulldog, and simply Protect among others. It's a shotgun that has a revolving cylinder with the capacity to hold 12 rounds of 12-gauge shells. The gun was first developed in 1983 by a Zimbabwean man named Hilton R. Walker with the same name of Armcell Striker. It received mixed reception, but back then it was the only shotgun that could hold 12 rounds in a non-detachable drum magazine. And despite some mechanical shortcomings, the gun was a huge success. The gun action was actually similar to that of revolvers because of a rotating cylinder. Furthermore, it also had a double action trigger that was required to rotate the heavy cylinder before releasing the hammer. The manufacturer included a clockwork spring in the design, which made the trigger pull short and light, but it came at the expense of a slow reloading process. However, the design was rectified in the 1980s as Walker included a cocking lever on the right side of the barrel. The clockwork spring was also removed to correct the firing mechanism and was replaced by an ejector rod to add an automatic ejection system. The modified version was built in the United States and marketed as Protector, which had a simpler and inexpensive design. But even the modifications didn't solve all the problems. As more guns with similar ammo capacity hit the market, the sweeper slowly lost its popularity. The final nail in the coffin was the declaration of this gun in destructive devices by the Treasury Department, which required $200 to purchase it. So now, no one really wants it, but the government plans to ban it anyways. Number 2. The Tommy Gun The Tommy Gun was designed by Auto Ordnance, a company owned by John Thompson, to help American soldiers in breaking the stalemate of trench warfare. It was also the first of its kind submachine gun that was not just semi-automatic but lightweight as well. Unluckily for a manufacturer, as the gun approached the final phases of development, the war on the Western Front was already over, so the company never had the chance to mass distribute the weapon. Because of the expensive wood and fine machine parts, the cost of production was just far too high. Furthermore, the manufacturer also lacked the capacity to produce the weapon on mass scale, owing it to a shortage of staff. It took more than three months to produce a single unit. So Tommy Gun production was outsourced to a larger company called Colt. Colt produced 15,000 units for auto ordnance at the cost of $44.56 a piece. That translates to about $640 today by factoring in inflation. But to make a profit, auto ordnance had to sell at very high prices, which were equal to over $2,200 today. Unsurprisingly, the company never took off because of the prices and was about to go bankrupt. Luckily for them, World War II happened and the military formally adopted the gun because of its accuracy and reliability. However, that didn't change the fact that it was still too expensive for civilians and hence never got any popularity. Even today, enthusiasts aren't fans of the weapon, but the government has decided to ban it anyways. Number 1. Interdynamic MP9 The MP9 was designed by Interdynamic, a Swedish company back in 1983. It was a fully automatic 9mm gun that's classified by the BAT-F. Because it utilizes cheap molded polymer and stamped steel parts, it was inexpensive to build, which made it an affordable alternative to expensive submachine guns. It was intended for the Swedish military, but the government really never took an interest, and it never even went into production in Sweden. So, the company took the design to the US and started manufacturing it with the name KG-9. The run in the US was not smooth, because the ATF forced the company to redesign because it could be converted into a full auto with ease. The manufacturer complied with the required changes, but the gun didn't take off in the United States as well. Neither government nor civilians showed a particular interest in it. 
It's estimated that the company produced less than 50 units in total, and 24 of them had the select fire configuration and collapsible stock. The performance of the gun can't be gauged because it's hard to find, and even the collectors don't have interest in this particular weapon. It's beyond me why the Biden administration wants to ban a weapon that's not even manufactured anymore and barely existed in the first place when it was in production. But hey, if it's not absurd, I wouldn't be making this video, and you wouldn't know about any of these weapons. So I guess there's a silver lining to it after all. Well, that's all we have for you in this video. We hope it was fun and informative. Stay connected with us to learn the latest updates about firearms, and we'll see you on the next one.